Hello and welcome to the Post to Post podcast. It is podcast number 36. My name's Neil. I'm joined here with Brent. And uh, it is the first week of the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk quite a bit about the Olympics, I think. Uh, there's, this podcast probably won't be as long as normal because we've watched mostly uh, Olympics. And when I say Olympics, I don't just mean hockey. I mean other stuff too. Yeah. So I haven't watched a lot of, a lot of NHL. I've watched week. very little. Yeah. I've paid very little attention to the NHL, as is usual, I think, for me every four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the NHL just, for that couple of weeks, seems to be less important. And, of course, when NHL teams were letting their players play in the Olympics, then all the focus was on the Olympics. So. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our cocky conversations and stuff in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, if this ends up being only 40 minutes or whatever, then that's fine. Uh, what we're going to do is actually uh, film a bonus podcast. Uh, right after this, Ooh. not really hockey related at all. It's more of a Q and A uh, directed towards you. Oh, so I got some questions from Patreon people for you, and we can just have a have some conversations about life and and all kinds of stuff. So, Is there any points? Is it like Jeopardy? Do I win money? Actually, I do have some some Jeopardy <laughs> questions for you on there. <laughs> really? So, yeah. Okay. Not really, but well, <laughs> kind of, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure how much stuff you have on your list. It's probably better that you go first. Okay. So have at it. Have at it. Uh, I have uh, some comments about the Olympic hockey that I've watched in the last 12 hours or so, some of it on tape delay, some of it live. We're actually recording this on around a noontime on a Saturday. Right, I forgot to mention that. And if you're a habitual podcast listener that expects to have the podcast landing in your feed sometime late in the day on Sunday for listening to on Sunday night, uh, the podcast will be a bit out of date by the time that you listen to it. I'll probably release it tonight or Mm -hmm. tomorrow morning. Okay. So we'll be talking about things that haven't happened yet, and uh, we'll be talking about things that are uh, soon to happen or have just happened, but they'll be more historic by the time they're heard by Mm. Uh, the first game I want to talk about, I guess because I'm Canadian and I'm allowed, is the Canada-Czech game. And it's also the game that happened most recently. It did happen most recently as, as far as Canada goes. As far as Canada. There were a few live games this morning, our time. South Korea, or Korea generally, uh, the time zone is about as bad as it can get as far as trying to follow anything live. It's just the way it is. That's fine. So you said last week that South Korea does that 30 minutes ahead thing, I like thought, Newfoundland. Yeah. But you, I think you meant to say North Korea. Oh. It's North Korea that's created their own time zone. Oh, really? Not so. Okay. Yeah. Pardon me. My apologies to both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want, especially don't want the North mad at me. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, hate, they hate everyone, I think. So. Yeah, I think so. You've, you're already on that list. Okay. Well, I, and I did figure out since then that there's 13 hours off of our time. So if it's noon here in Atlantic Canada, it's 1 a.m. Yeah. in uh, South Korea. And... It, it's, I guess, makes it 12 hours exactly off of Eastern time. I guess, or, that, or I guess that's it, easy. Yeah. No, it's 14. 14 off Eastern 14 time. 14 off Eastern. If it's noon here, it's 11 a.m. and still 1. Still, still yeah, easy, though. 1 a.m. Yeah, it's, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially for me, because I'm a bit of a working stiff and I have regular office hours during the week. Mm-hmm. You, on the other hand, you have more flexibility with that. So you've been keeping almost Olympic hours, I think, haven't you? Or pretty close? Yeah, I went to sleep last night at 5.30, 6. So that's, that's this like morning f- at 5.30 or four something. Four and a half hours ago or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's crazy. I... I was talking to some Patreon people, and we got into some conversations about metal music, and then I got sidetracked listening to <laughs> some new stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. And and you watched the game live then overnight, I did. right? Because I did. it started at about eleven or eleven thirty hour time. It's like eleven ten hour time, I think. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a weird weird time to start a game ten minutes after eleven, but yeah. So you watched it live. We had it on the PVR, and I when I got up this morning, I had the radio on for a while, but when they went to go to the Olympic report in the radio, I shut it off quickly. So you didn't even know who won? I had no idea. Oh, that's awesome. Then. I had no idea. I watched the whole game through, mm-hmm. right through overtime and then the shootout, and I didn't know how it was going to end. So it was great. I was intentionally keeping myself away from spoilers. Hmm. So I'm assuming you saw the funny play of the interference call. Oh, I did. Wasn't that the strangest thing ever? That was hilarious. Can you explain it a little bit just for the people? Sure. Uh, As uh, Chris Lee was skating past the Czech bench, Martin Erat, uh, the the door happened to be open in the Czech bench, and Martin Erat collided with him, and Chris Lee kind of ping-ponged into the bench, 
And then uh, Mark Yordan came along and to get in and gave him a, a basically an ass check and, <laughs> yeah. and sat him almost down in the bench and then closed the door. So, so there, there's Lee in the check bench looking around with his a puzzled look in his face, like, I'm with the wrong guy. Yeah, standing next to them, yeah. laughing. But because your Dan had, you know, gone in and, and really forced him into the bench mm-hmm. fully, and then the door closed after that, he got an interference penalty, which yeah. was the weirdest one I've ever seen, but I think entirely appropriate. Oh, it was a good call. Oh, yeah. yeah it was a good call. <laughs> because really, let's say he got stuck in there. Could... could uh, Willie Desjardins put out another player to make it a five on five. I don't know that you could because he's the other player is not on your bench. I've never thought about that because I've never <laughs> seen the situation ever before, and probably will never see it again. I've seen guys be checked into the other opposing mm-hmm. bench, but they just get right back up and, and go back on the ice. But like, yeah, he, yeah. usually they're thrown back up by, yeah. by the other guys. But he, uh, he was he was so confused that I don't th- even think that he. <laughs> thought about jumping over the boards because he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know where he was. And that's finally how he did get out. Yeah. He hopped over to get back out again once he realized, like, it, it would be odd, like, you're looking around, like, these aren't my guys. And <laughs> <laughs> but the, 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 the refs, they, they huddled for quite a while did, before yeah. deciding what to do, but they did the right thing. They did, yeah. I actually thought the officiating was quite good. Uh, we haven't talked about the score yet, and that's unfortunate. That's kind of stupid because if I was a listener, I'd be raging at, you at, mentioned at it. us. By, no, I don't think I did. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't think so. Oh. Anyway, Canada lost three two in a shootout. How do you feel about shootouts? I hate them. Me too. I hate. I them. said that. I said that in our Discord chat before mm-hmm. um, the shootout even happened. Like I said, I like in my opinion, shootouts should not be no. in Olympic hockey or hockey in general. So. I, I, I'm oh, I'm somewhat okay with the three on three overtime, but I think it's cheap. I think that's cheap as well. And the damn thing is in a tie. If it's tied at two at the end of the game, end it. Now, in, if it's the gold medal game or the bronze medal game play some kind of overtime. I would prefer five on five, actually, but I know that's hard to do, especially with Olympic TV schedules. Mm -hmm. You can't have a game that goes six periods of 20-minute hockey. You just can't do that. So I understand they have to end it quicker, but it's cheap. And and shootouts are the cheapest of all. I completely disagree about the three-on-three overtime thing. I love watching it. It's exciting. I would... But it's not, the, it's, it's not the game. At least it's still a team sport at that point. Well, yeah, that's, that's one good thing about it. I love watching three-on-three three hockey. I, and I love three-on-three three overtime in the NHL when it d- doesn't really matter in, the, in an 82-game season. One game of three-on-three three where you lose or something goes crazy is not too bad. But it's the Olympics. You're only playing three games, necessarily. And you don't get to play more than three unless you do well. And it's so much more important that I think it's deciding it in a three-on-three... <coughs> Is awful. Now, I must say, both of the three-on-three three overtime games that I watched didn't end up ending the game and they went to shootouts anyway. I, Ugh. and I'm not saying that I don't like shootouts just because Canada lost. Um, I'd be saying the exact same thing if Canada won as well. Oh, yeah. And even if you win, it's only two points instead of three in the yeah. standings in the Olympics. So you're already, you're already ripped. Mm. <laughs> if the game ends in a tie, you, you've lost that full point you could have extra, you know, full extra points you could have had. So, yeah, I so don't like it. Canada's next game is against South Korea, I believe. Or, well, Korea. Korea. Although I don't think there's any North players on the men's team. There are for the women's team. So, yeah, Canada's next game, and it's going to be at 7 a.m. Eastern time Sunday morning, which is 8 a.m. here in Atlantic Canada, 8.30 in Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that game should be somewhat easy, but uh, they can't. They can't take their foot off the gas, obviously. Canada has one win and an overtime or shootout loss. So they now have a total of four points out of a possible six if they win the game uh, Sunday morning, or in this case, Sunday night Korea time, as is expected. They'll end up with seven points, which may get them in the quarterfinals, or they may have to play their way into the quarterfinals. So I understand that there are no NHL players for Canada, obviously. That's right. If... Korea beat Canada. Mm-hmm. Would that be the still be the biggest upset of all time in hockey? I don't know of all time. I think it'll be pretty hard to beat the Miracle on Ice in 1980 uh, for upsets, but it would be an upset. We have to also consider, though, that of the Korean hockey team, nine, I think, I heard this, I didn't research it personally, but nine of the Korean hockey team players are Canadian-born who have gone to Korea, taken Korean citizenship, and now play in Team Korea. I think only, and Korea would never have gotten in in a qualifying tournament. You know, let's be straight. 
they're there because they're the host country. Yeah, that's that's part of the host's yeah. responsibility. So they've loaded up with some Canadians to try to be competitive, and anything can happen in sports. You never know. And these nine guys, and maybe some of the others, will be very motivated to play super-duper well against Canada, which is the birthplace of the game. But... Well, do you remember in 2014 in Sochi when Canada played, I think it was Latvia? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And it was 1-1 mm-hmm. until like maybe seven or eight minutes left in the third period, and mm-hmm. Canada was all over them. Like there's like 50, 60 shots or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was an unbelievable game. Yeah. I've looked online to see if I could rewatch that game. I can't find it anywhere. I want to watch it so bad. But <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it can happen. The other thing too, and I think I heard this right, I think the Koreans were beaten by the Czechs only by a score of 2-1. Hmm. I think I read that somewhere. And that Canada had to be extra careful when they're playing the Czechs uh, in the game yesterday because that they sh- shouldn't be lulled into complacency by playing against a team that only beat the Koreans 2-1. Right. I'll, I'll look the score up, but I, I think that's what happened. Interesting. Hmm. So the Americans have actually struggled in the Olympics so far. They lost to Slovenia, and then they just lost to who? Who did you say that they lost to today or who? last night? Uh, who's that? Or this the, morning? The USA? Oh, oh Russia. The Olympic athletes oh, from right, Russia. Russia. Bored and nothing. You weren't even listening to me. Well, I was I was doing research. You're definitely a guy. You can't multitask. <laughs> well, I'm a man. There it is. Czech Republic 2, South Korea 1 in men's hockey back uh, on Thursday. Hmm. So, hey, they got a goal against the Czechs, and the Czechs only beat them by a goal, and the Czechs just, just beat Canada by a goal. So uh, everything, everything else being equal makes you wonder. Who does the USA play next? Uh, next. Now, I, I can't talk and, and research at the same time as I've just proven. I think the Americans have played. Have they played all their games now? I don't think so. They've played one more, I think. Uh, I don't believe so. Oh, sorry. No, they've got one win, or sorry, two wins and one loss. They've played their games. But I thought you just said that. No. Well, well Slovenia beat them. Three and games. if Russia just beat them, how do they have only, only have one loss? Sorry, I'm looking at the women's side. My apologies. The women played, uh, they started a couple of days earlier than the men, so their their games are done in the round robin. So let me get back up to the USA. No problem. No. <laughs> the Americans have one game left, so they have a win and an overtime or shootout loss. Okay. Or, no, a regular loss because they lost to Russia. Right. Okay, yeah, you're really confusing me. I'm having a bad time here. See, the stats I'm using from this website are not up to date. They've got the scores updated, but the stats, the actual standings are not updated. So I've tried to update them manually on my piece of paper here, and I've failed. Is this like your ESPN research and some videos? Something like that. <laughs> Something I'm just, like just going to look it up. We, don't ha- we have time to kill anyway. So. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Here we are worried about a podcast that might end too early. <laughs> the way we're going, that won't happen. Yeah. Now, this, this website is, uh, and I won't say what it is, because now I've decided I'm, I'm unhappy with it. No, so. you say what it is. Uh, it's landof10.com. Land of 10? Yeah, it's not a professional site, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just, you know, some person who's trying to trying to do their best. So I don't want to really dump on them. Oh. Uh, okay, so, yeah, they've only played... What? Each team plays three games in the round robin phase with a maximum of nine points. Then those standings determine who moves on to the quarter. Some some get a bye into the quarterfinals and some have to play their way in. I don't understand this these standings. Oh. It says the United States has one win. It's not only me then. And one overtime loss. Right. Hmm. That's what my phone shows too. Well, did they not lose to Slovenia? They no, they just lost to the Olympic athletes from Russia for nothing. I know, but didn't they also lose to Slovenia? Yeah, in, in overtime. So why do they have a win? Well, they, they must have beat somebody. But I don't know. That's still only two games. I know. I'm so confused. I think they have one win, one regulation loss now, because that's not updated in your standings either, because it just happened. And they have one uh, over, overtime loss. So they'd have a total of four points, and I think they're, they're done. Canada has a chance to get another <sighs> three tomorrow morning. Anyways. But, well... So I hope our viewers and our listeners are now fully informed yeah, <laughs> on how the Olympics go. As confused as I am. But I do have comments on the on the Canadian game. What Canadian game? The Canadian game against the Czechs that we both watched okay, at the yeah. same time. I was su- shocked 
that with a bigger ice surface, like they have in European and international hockey, which is uh, 100 feet wide instead of 85 in the NHL, same length, 200 feet, I was shocked with how little free ice there was for the teams to do a lot of free ice skating. And to, there was very little open ice rushes and skating. The Czechs were amazing checkers. Yeah, they were. They were fantastic on, on, the, on the puck and on the Canadians. And the Canadians were good, too. It was a very evenly matched hockey game. I thought the Czechs did a masterful job at, at clamping down any chances Canada had for really good possession or really good offense. Every, every encounter was a full-on battle. They played like a. They played like a team who goes into the NHL playoffs in the eighth seed against a uh, number one seed and shuts them down. Mm-hmm. That's how they played. They they didn't play with finesse or or, or skill. They played with uh, effort and uh, the system that they used. They just like the man on man coverage that they had was unbelievable. It was it was and, tremendous. Uh, they did a great job, and as the commentators, and by the way, the game was very well called. Chris it, Cuth- it was. Chris Cuthbert is a is an excellent play-by-play announcer. He is. And I forgot how good he was mm. uh, until you see him doing the Olympics again. He's great. He is fantastic. And he, he made some uh, very good observations about how the Czechs were putting, activating their defense. They were getting into the rush a lot, surprising Canada. Surpri- you know, Canada's looking for three forwards to play against, and all of a sudden there's two other guys there. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're... If you're anticipating that, you might be able to get rushes going back the other way, but they never got to that. How do you feel about the ice surface? Do you, like I noticed, you you mentioned it wasn't as noticeable as you thought it would be, Mm -hmm. but do you like it? Do you, like, could you, would you prefer to see that size of of ice in the NHL? I think I would. I think I would because I, well, and maybe, maybe I don't know anything about hockey, in in which case I'm on the wrong podcast, but... (laughs) To me, if you have more ice to play with, you have more room for each player to do mm. their thing. There's more opportunity to show skill <clears> and all of that. But it, that didn't play itself out in the game that I watched. So I, I'm maybe a bit conflicted about that. But traditionally, I think I would like the larger ice surface. I, I have always been against it until Sochi and uh, started to come around to it. And this year, I love it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I really like the idea of it. They could never do it because the cost to reformat the inside of each NHL arena would be billions of dollars, maybe. Well. Hundreds if, hundreds of millions. If you add them all together, it might be quite a bit. And then there's a bit of lost revenue. You're, you're chewing up uh, two or three rows of seats, maybe yeah, more. Yeah, you're, you're losing, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. 200 seats, something like that, 300, who knows. And I do like the idea of having the game ha- happening in a more compact place and in the NHL we still see players able to throw all kinds of skill and, oh, yeah. and dipsy doodle and you know these uh, Connor McDavid odd man or, or one man rushes up and down the ice they can still happen even on a smaller ice surface but I'm like you whenever they went to a large ice surface before for international play I'd be like oh man I don't like this but I didn't have a good reason for not liking it just because it was different it was different yeah and I thought it gave the other countries an advantage because they always played on the surface and we didn't so our guys would be cramped uh, or or they would be cramped when they play in our surfaces, and then we would not know what to do with that extra seven and a half feet on mm-hmm. either side of the ice when we played in their area. But I don't think that way anymore because I've actually put some real thought into it. I I noticed that um, the women's game it was the ice surface was much more noticeable. Mm-hmm. They had so much room to to work. I guess they're just not as fast as. As as men skaters, but and there's no checking in women's hockey. And there's no check, and they're smaller, so it looks like there's more room just based on yeah. physical, like physical. And there's less impedance on them when they are doing their thing. Mm. I, to be it's honest, I, I enjoyed oh. that game more than the men's. Oh, absolutely. Women's Olympic hockey is amazing. Women's hockey is is really good because I think a lot of it because of the no checking. They they can skate. They can they can mm. really get going, and they, some of them are fast. Did you know what you just said? You said a saying that you harp on Bob for a lot. Okay. They get going. They get going. Oh, oh dear. Going. <laughs> He's going into the zone. Well, now that I have Bob Cole's autograph, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm his biggest fan. Yeah, well, almost as old as Bob, too. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. that's Bob Cole, I think we had this on an earlier podcast, his first game, I think which he did on the radio, was in 1969. You were 10. And he's still working. They they played a replay on CBC on the overnight game uh, that you watched live and I watched on delay. They played a, 
a replay from the 20-year-old game where Czech and the Czech Czechoslovakians then and Canada. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, it would have been. I'm, ju I'm just. Is this the gold day one? Uh, yeah, it was. Well, it was, it was decided in a shootout, and the Czechs won. Yeah. But Bob Cole was calling that game. Oh, was he? Twenty years ago, and hmm. he sounded the same, except he had the names a little more right then. Who called the Nagano Olympics in? Was it ninety six? I don't no, know. No, ninety eight. I don't know. I can't know. remember. In two thousand ten, it was Chris Cuthbert. Yeah, who did golden the golden goal. goal, the golden yeah. goal call. But he has done them for a long time. He's he's not a young man anymore either. No offense, but uh, and he's, he does, he's getting up there. He's a smart guy. He does a lot of different sports. Yeah. He does CFL sometimes, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, he does curling, I think, sometimes too, doesn't he? Well, Vic Router does most of the, a lot of the curling, which is... Uh, but, yeah, I, I know... <clears throat> I know the voice you're thinking of, and it might he might do some. Maybe it's not him. Yeah. Not thinking of. Then there's another guy, Mark Lee, who does some other hockey. Mm. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not good with names. Play by play. I'm good with faces. So. Yeah, but Chris Cuthbert, I think if you look at all the guys that are doing the NHL coverage now on CBC and Hockey Night in Canada, and, and you include all the networks in Canada, I think he's the best. Mm. I think he's the best, and I don't hear him very much in the NHL stuff. But maybe that's just because he does Western games and I'm not up, or I don't know. But. I have a question for you, or right. in, uh, unless you have something else to say about that game specifically, that Canada game. I do. One more thing. Okay, go for it. As much as we've just spent some time here complimenting the uh, the play-by-play, -play, I thought the camera work, again, was absolute garbage. The power, the the power play? With that stupid high-floating camera. You couldn't see anything. You couldn't see it. They had this camera floating way up, probably somewhere in the rafters on a wire, looking down on the ice from a great distance, probably from center ice or even further back, moving back and forth, and you could not see the puck. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was just awful. And I'll make one final comment. It's not just the cameramen. They're just doing their job. And that camera up above, you can't blame the camera because that's just something installed on a wire. The person you blame is the person in the switch truck or wherever they are. Whoever makes the decision to show that yeah. angle. And whoever that was was the same idiot who made the decision. Yeah. Shootout? Shootout. Yeah. The, the second check shot? Yeah. Wojciech Wolski had just scored from Canada, for Canada, and he was doing his goal celebration on the ice, which you're used to seeing after a shootout goal, and it's a big game. Canada was up at this point, one nothing in the shootout. And then they went to a taped replay of his family up in the stands mm -hmm. showing their reaction, which was wonderful, except for the fact that they lingered on that reaction replay for the entire length of the next Czech shoot goal. Took it from center ice, skated all the way in, and scored, and we didn't see it because we were still looking at the family of the guy who scored the previous goal. And this is the Olympics? This you is the Olympics. You think that you would send your best staff over there mm. to make the decisions that need to be made like that and make sure that stuff like that gets... Yeah. At like, first I thought that, okay, CBC might have no control. Maybe it's a pool camera setup, and CBC, NBC, all the international broadcasters are stuck with the feed they're getting. I thought that this could be why. It's so bad. But then I saw things that gave me, I think, a 99% confidence that CBC had producers over there, they had cameramen over there, because they were focusing on Canadian things. They were oh, yeah. focusing on Canadian people and focusing you know, in the stands from time to time, and they would show things that only Canadians would want to see. So that leads me to the, I think, fairly safe conclusion that CBC did have their own crew over there. And the putrid nature of the broadcast, the absolute garbage of the production of that hockey broadcast proved it. It was CBC. Boom. I loved it. Yeah, and I completely agree. It's, it's, it's infuriating, really. I mean, this is the ultimate stage of hockey. There are millions of people, millions of people, and like not just in Canada, mm -hmm. around the world. There was a ton of oh, American yeah. people that I was talking to, to in, in Discord last night, mm -hmm. tons of them watching the game, the Canada game. Like, I can't even, like, there would be, there would be, like, how, what would you average the viewership to be? be because of the oddball time change business and it being in the yeah, middle of the right. night, it, it, it might have been hard to, to really get a live eyeballs audience. I don't know what NBC is doing with their delayed coverage and when they're going to show the games. And maybe the Canadian game in the States, you'd know better than me as to whether they were on some ancient tier, third tier channel, you know, uh, versus or something in the States, I don't know. I have to assume at least one to two million Canadians were watching the game. Oh, for sure. Probably, Had to be. Probably at least a million 
Yeah. USA. I mean, I don't know. It's a Friday it's night just... game. And for basically everybody west of Toronto, they wouldn't even have to stay up late to watch it. Yeah. Because it was really an afternoon game in Korea. That, and it probably started at just a little after supper time in Vancouver. 7 10 mm -hmm. in Vancouver. There you go. So. So that wouldn't have been too bad. So a lot of eyeballs, and even in the States maybe, but, uh, you know, diehard hockey fans in the U.S., if they're, if they're so into hockey that they're not only watching the U.S., but other teams as well, mm -hmm. I can't imagine there'd be millions of them, but I hope there would be. I don't know. Mm. Moral of the story is uh, CBC. You can do better. You can do better. You can do way better with our tax money. The CBC, by the way, for those outside of Canada who don't know this, is a government-funded broadcaster mm. and government means taxpayers and taxpayers is us and we're paying for it plus on top of that we're paying for it by watching the advertisements that they sell to toyota and whoever else mm -hmm. so we're paying for it that way too doing cbc a favor here and i i must say the, the camera work and the production work other than the play-by-play -play, was crap it's and the worst part about it is there's nothing we can do nothing because these people are all, well, I'll say it, they're unionized, they mm -hmm. have jobs for life, they can't be, they can't be fired. CBC bids in the Olympics and they get to control all elements of the broadcast coming back to Canada. It's kind of like where you work. Um, in a way. Okay. Well, in a way, but The not, government in general. Yeah, but my job is not fully secure. I don't think anyone's is. I think uh, in our world where I work for the government, if you do a poor job, there's a way of dealing with that. But in the CBC, I don't think there is because they reward, <laughs> they reward <laughs> poor jobs. And I, I just, I feel so bad. I know people that work in the CBC and they're fine people, but the people who do the hockey side of things just need to be retired. Mm, I agree. Something. Sorry. So let me ask you a question about the NHL. Mm -hmm. So this is a completely changing topic here. Tick, tick. Do you think that there, should, there should be less regular season games in the NHL? And if you do, why? And if you do, how many should there be instead of 82? Well, I don't think there should be less games, but I do think there should be fewer games. <laughs> okay. A little dig there. I, but I do agree. There should be fewer games. I would be content with 60 or 70 at the most, 72 at the very most. I think 82 is too much because when they hit the playoffs, there's sometimes very little left <laughs> in the tank. I, I know it's all about revenue. I know it's all about putting bums in seats. And if you have play 82 games, you have 41 home games. I would prefer there be like 60 games and be more like we see in other leagues where they play for less time too. Well, if don't you look, go ahead. If you look at the NFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They play what, 16 games in the regular season? Something like that. The most profitable sports mm -hmm. uh, league in literally the entire world. They play 16 games. Yeah. Each team, each team plays 16 games. That's Which it. means eight home games. Yeah. Eight home games. And it means, though, also, on the other hand, they're putting 85, 90, 100,000 people in the, uh, I was just about to in say the that, stadium yeah. when they do that. So the, But it's not about the people in the, in the seats anyway. It's all about the television. Oh, yeah, totally. Just, just like uh, football in the UK, it's mm -hmm. all about television. Some of these, as we did in the more post-to-post -post channel, went through the Premier League stadiums, uh, mistakes and all. And some of those stadiums only seat a few thousand people, whereas some of them seat 80,000. Yeah. But yeah, it yeah. doesn't really matter. It's all about the TV revenue, right? It, yeah. It's yeah. But, but to, to your main question, I wish they wouldn't start in early October. I wish they would wait till maybe mid to late November before they started. And I wish they'd be done in March and have hockey over with, let's say, by the middle of May. Playing hockey in June is just stupid. <laughs> it's just stupid. I think that there should be less games, mm -hmm. but... Uh, my reason is because there's too much hockey on TV some nights. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, uh, I think it was last night or the night before, there was three games on. Mm -hmm. And the night before that, there was like 14 games on. Yeah. How do you go from three games one night to 14 games the other night? If there's three games on, you can do some channel switching. You can keep up with the games. And there's 14 games on. How are you supposed to watch 14 games well, or even even pieces of 14 games? Well, I don't think there's any intention for anyone to watch more than one game. They're not they're not looking for you. <laughs> Cuz you're true. the only, you're the only 
person probably in a thousand miles who's trying to watch them all at the same time. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I I understand, <laughs> but no, I I I just think there's the scheduling is so much of an issue with the back to back games. There shouldn't need any, be any need to have back to back games. That's that's a very very good point. And it, the only reason you have to have back to back games right now is because you have eighty two games yeah, in the exactly. schedule. If you had sixty four games for each team. Let's just say 64, because it's a nice number that divides nicely and makes, mm-hmm. you know, it makes it, I think, scheduling fairly simple, uh, especially in a 32-team league, which we might be in the next couple of years. Um, that would be do- doable without making anybody play a back-to-back. And the thing is, it's not fair. No. They're, like Pittsburgh has a ton of back-to-back games this year. I think Boston does as well. And I th- teams like Toronto maybe only have, like, five and Pittsburgh has like 19. Mm-hmm. Like, how is that fair? Yeah. But I guess it, if you look at the standings, it, it doesn't really reflect. But Now, if all those 19 back-to-back games were against other teams that were also playing the second game of a back-to-back on that same night, and there was an equivalent a degree of fatigue, it might be a little more fair, but that's not happening either. No, that's not happening either. We're having teams like Montreal and a couple of weeks ago. They were sitting at home waiting to play, I don't know if it was San Jose or who it was, but they just played the night before in Toronto. Anaheim. Anaheim. And then they go into Montreal after... Oh, no, no, it was Nashville. Okay, okay. No rest the night before, and then they go into Montreal. It's not fair to the visiting team to be on the road in the first place, living out of hotels and airplanes, and then expect them to play two two games, two nights in a row in two different cities with with travel in between, uh, playing against a team that's sitting at home waiting for them that, that didn't play the night before. That's not fair. Now, not that it helped Montreal any. <laughs> So I guess that kind of blows my logic out of the water because Montreal lost the game anyway. Now, I just wanted to look at Boston's schedule really quick. Sure. Uh, What would you say that the average team plays for games in a month? Um, They play roughly five and a half or five months of full-time hockey, not counting Christmas break. No, I mean like in a month. So, So I'm thinking probably 15 or 16 games a month. Really? That's, I think that's a lot. Okay. Boston plays 17 games in March. Okay. So far, so good. <laughs> like, they have, there is only once in the month where they have more than one day off. Mm-hmm. On the, between the third, they have a game on the third and a game on the sixth. Um, I don't see any back-to-backs there either right now. There's no back-to-backs in that month. Well, cool. So basically, they're playing the oh, maximum wait, number of games you're allowed to play <laughs> without having back-to-back games. There is, there is a back-to-back game. Oh, is there? Yeah. There's one. Chicago, actually. Oh, there it is. They yeah. play in Chicago, and then they play in Boston. On a Saturday, Sunday, yeah. They but weren't side by side in the calendar. So. That's a pretty grueling schedule. Terrible. Every second game. Yeah. So they're on the. They're at home for five. Uh, they're away for four, home for one, away for four, home for two. Mm-hmm. That's uh, it's going to be tough. But. Yeah, it is. and uh, I don't know. I just think there's too much focus on regular season games, and it's totally against the NHL business model. So nothing we're having in this discussion is ever going to see the light of day yeah. because it doesn't make money for somebody. So, Speaking of money, yeah. that leads into my next question. All what right. a great segue. Cool. Do you think it's time for us to get a new commissioner? I thought it was time probably about 24 years ago. <laughs> What's the biggest reason you think Gary Bettman should go? Because he, like, as much as I hate Gary Bettman, he does do a lot of good things for the NHL, but he does so many more terrible things because he's a weasel. Mm -hmm. My answer is going to be driven by sentimentality and not by business. And I think that is my answer. I'd like to have a commissioner that has more sentimental feeling for the game itself and less it being about business and money. Do you think he cares about hockey? Do you think he's an, like a hockey fan? Would you classify no. it? No, I don't think so no. either. No. And that's the thing, because he came from basketball. And yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that he's a basketball fan more than a hockey fan. I don't think he was a basketball fan. I don't fan think either. he's either. He, he's a fan of money. Yeah, he's a fan of money. And, and he's, a, he's a, a weaselly guy in a suit. He, he's just a suit. There is not once, there is not one interview, there is not one uh, phone conversation, call in, uh, documentary, whatever of Gary Bettman that I've seen where he has come across as a genuine hockey fan. Yeah. I would love to see 
an actual genuine hockey mind in that position mm -hmm. instead of Gary Batman. I think it's time for him to go. Yeah. And like you, I, I, I think it was time for him to go a long time ago. But it's kind of like Joe Quinville in Chicago. It's important, and some important things happened in the past, but I think it's time for a new face, mm -hmm. time for a new plan, I guess. Uh, I just think it's, it's 25 years. That's almost the long, longest tenured G, uh, commissioner in the NHL before it wasn't called commissioner, but it was, mm -hmm. what was it called before? Wasn't called, uh, president. called president. What was it called the president? Yeah. Anyways. It was the NHL president, Clarence Campbell. Yeah, Clarence Campbell was like 33 uh, years. John Ziegler yeah. uh, was a president. So I think commissioner came along with Bettman. Like he might not be the very first guy to have the title, but about the same time. Yeah. When he retires, do you think he'll be in the Hockey Hall of Fame? God. Thankfully, the Hall of Fame committee is not the same people as the NHL Board of Governors, so he may not have as much love outside the NHL Board of Governors meetings as everyone has for him inside the inside the room. But I don't know, and I'm I wouldn't be I wouldn't be throwing up in the backyard if they did put him in the Hall of Fame as a builder or something because he did a lot. If you just look at where hockey has now grown under his leadership where it probably wouldn't have been even tried by most people. Most people that I would support for commissioner wouldn't even try to put an NHL team into Las Vegas. Wouldn't even try. I it. agree with that. And I think it was the right move to do. So not everything he's done is bad, and probably most of the things he's done is good. I just don't like his the size of his personality influencing what's happening in the league. I don't want him up on stage in the draft introducing every team. I agree. I think that's just stupid. So He's not good at it. And <laughs> and anyway, you're starting me again. You're triggering me. Well, no, no one likes him there anyway. So no. he, and he knows it. He, he likes the booze. Yes. He likes it. He loves it. They booed him the last time. I think it was in Vegas. They booed him. And he looked up and he said, you can do better than that. He's like, the, he is the Donald Trump of hockey. I said that last podcast. <laughs> he really is. Uh, that kind of segues me because you mentioned his personality. Mm-hmm. Do you think that he'll try and get uh, a trophy named after him? No. The Batman trophy? No. I don't know. Who can make the most money? Wh whatever team makes the most money that year gets the Batman trophy? Someone else might make one, but uh, no, he won't. He won't be behind that. I think his, his ego does have limits. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, just in keeping with NHL news, did you hear that Backlund signed a contract um, in Calgary? Yes, I did. Six years, five point two five five sorry five point three five million. I saw that yesterday on Twitter. What was your first reaction to that? Thought it was a little high. Well, I saw that number and I saw the name. And I'm like, really? Mm. TJ Oshie makes five point seven five, and you're telling me? I mean, Backlund's a good player, mm -hmm. but you're telling me Backlund's going to make fifty thousand dollars or less than TJ Oshie? Mm. 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 I don't know. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a little high. Just, Take a million off that? Yeah. A million two, million three, something like that? Mm -hmm. uh, million point two, not yeah. three million. Uh, yeah, a uh, little high, but hopefully it works out for, for Calgary. Um, do you have any NHL news to to talk about? I'll just start, a very throw, brief, sorry. I'll throw it back to you. Yes, yeah, just a very brief standing recap. Even though I didn't watch any games and didn't follow very much, I am keeping a track on who's where. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a whole lot's changed since last week, but uh, in the Atlantic Division, the top three teams are, I think, the only ones that are going to make the playoffs. You know, the chances of Florida or Detroit, which are the only teams in a bit of a winning situation that aren't in the top three, mm -hmm. making it into wild cards is virtually zero now. Uh, in the Metropolitan, uh, Washington, Pittsburgh, Philly. Uh, Philly's being challenged by the New Jersey Devils. They're only just a touch behind. But then you've got the Islanders, Columbus, and Carolina all fighting it out for that second wild card spot. They're all in it. And don't forget about Florida. And Florida has a chance. I mean, they're they're a. Do you remember what I said in my video? Yes, yes I do. Like, and I, I, games games in hand are important, but they don't get uh, talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not expecting Florida to win their four games in hand or whatever it is now, because I don't I don't know I don't remember what happened last night because I was watching Olympic hockey. But um, it's possible mm -hmm. and. I mean, a four-game winning streak is not uncommon at all in the NHL, so you never know what could happen. Yeah, you never know. Uh, and teams can make a push like we've seen. We saw it last year. Mm -hmm. uh, all you need is a hot goalie, yeah. really. 
Yeah. Ottawa's uh, surge last year. I don't know when it started, but. Uh, it wasn't last year. Was it Calgary? Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, Calgary, right. Mm. I don't know when the surge started, but it was probably underway by now. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it was. So, yeah, it's anyone's game in, in the East uh, when it comes to those. The only teams that are certainly not even going to get a sniff uh, is going to be the Buffalo, Ottawa, Montreal grouping. The Rangers are a, still a bit of a contender, but I think they, as we talked about last week, they've already realized they should be a seller, not a buyer at the trade deadline, and uh, they're going to build. In the Pacific, uh, Vegas Golden Knights, they're actually 80 points uh, to Tampa Bay's 81, but Vegas holds a game in hand on that. Mm-hmm. So you never know. By the end of the weekend, they could be uh, leading the league. San Jose and Calgary are next. Anaheim and the Kings and Colorado are going to be fighting over the last wild card spot to get in. Right now it's held by uh, and by Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I think you would know that. You're wearing their stuff. And St. Louis have the two wild card spots uh, in the Western Conference. Nashville, oh, Winnipeg, Dallas, and Dallas. Oh, right. Dallas moved ahead of yep. St. Louis last night. Yeah, St. Louis <laughs> had, a, had a tough night. Uh, yeah. yeah. But St. Louis is still, I think, fairly comfortable in a wild card situation. They have uh, they have 72 points. Uh, same same point total as Dallas. It's just that Dallas has two games in hand now. Yeah. So. Um, the Kings are so streaky. Mm. Like, they, I think they lost, like, seven games in a row or something. And then they won like five games in a row, and now they've lost three games in a row, and yeah. So. You know who's on a four-game winning streak? I think it's four. Arizona. Three. Oh, three. Three Three-game winning streak. Of course, they played Montreal. Montreal's a great (laughs) team to play against if you want to get a streak going. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Do you know who? uh, Let's talk about streaks. Let's do it. Okay. Winning streaks. Toronto five. They're like nine one and zero or something in the last ten games. That's that's insane. Best record in the last. Last record in the league in the last 10, 10 games. Arizona, three games in a row. Pittsburgh, three games in a row. Everyone else has two or less. Wow. <coughs> Losing. Or, sorry, go ahead. No. Losing streaks. Do you know who has the most? Oh, boy. And for how many? Well, I know Montreal's on a four, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the time that you're listening to this, it might be five. Yeah, probably Vegas will be. They're playing tonight. Vegas tonight. <laughs> A team that can get you. It's almost impossible to beat them at home. Someone on Twitter asked me to make a Vegas style bet on the game tonight because they're a Vegas fan. I'm like, I already know Montreal's going to lose. I was listening to TSN 690 this morning. They have a broadcast that's on at eight o'clock in the morning in Montreal. And I was listening to it on my phone live. And they were talking about Montreal's game coming up in Vegas tonight. And one of the commentators said, you know, like, oh yeah, I wonder how, how long Montreal's been in town. You know, I hope they had some time to have some fun last night. And I'm thinking, no. Yeah. <laughs> Do you actually want them to win or not? If you don't want them to win, yeah, you hope they had some fun last night and they had to drag them out of the strip clubs at 4 a.m. <laughs> but uh, good God, I hope they did what Toronto did, which was... Yeah, stay Yeah, they arrive in town, away, play hockey, back in the bus and head right for the airport. Be no fooling around. And put them out in the desert in tents or something. <laughs> and just Yeah, don't let them near that city. Yeah, it's almost like when Montreal goes to Florida and those road trips. This past year actually wasn't as bad as usual. Yeah, California, Florida, they get on, get on those beaches and stuff. And they yeah, just, they uh, just see some bare shoulders and some <laughs> ankles and stuff after two or three months of winter in Canada. And they go down there and they see some, you know, lovely uh, scenery. Yeah, they get all hopped up on... They get the yips. They get the... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chicago is actually the team that has the most uh, losses. Losses. Wow. Guess how many? You said seven a minute ago, but I was talking about LA. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, oh man, five, eight. Ooh. <laughs> Edmonton is currently at a f- on a five game losing streak. They're and the Kings are at three. They are the junk. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, uh, I have one other thing to touch on. Mm-hmm. It's a, sorry, actually two two other things to get. Uh, touch on number one's a rumor that i heard today Ooh. i want to get your opinion on it mm-hmm. and i know you don't follow boston a lot so you might not have a, a real genuine opinion on this but the rumor that i heard was ryan mcdonough to the boston bruins for debrusque rookie carlo and a first and a first for mcdonough for mcdonough i was Ooh. like what what well boston's way too desperate if that's real like way too desperate. That's, way too desperate. Like, I couldn't believe that. I didn't, didn't even understand why that was even proposed. Even if it was a fake rumor, that's terrible. Forget where the two teams are in the standings. Boston challenging Tampa for the number one spot in the East or in the whole yeah Eastern Conference, mm-hmm. and the Rangers essentially out of it. 
Forget that part. That would be a bad trade anyway. Any, like, I like McDonough. I, I, I think I like McDonough more than most people. Mm-hmm. But, like, I wouldn't even trade no. Carlo for him. No. No, straight up. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even trade DeBrusque for him. DeBrusque is going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even trade a first. And a first? No. McDonough was a first round pick by Montreal. He was. But. They didn't stay with him long enough to see how good he'd be. No, I wouldn't even trade a first. No. <laughs> like. Ooh. What's his contract uh, term right now, McDonough? Um, that is a good question. I will look right now. Because hopefully this comes with five years left of a big no, long contract I or something. I think it's only like one or two. Because if it's only almost a rental or a little bit more than a rental, it's even stupider to, to make that trade, if you ask me. Um, yeah, it's two two years left. 4.7, which is a good contract for mm-hmm. for him. That's good value. But in... T- in sorry, he's got one year left after this one. Oh, and after that hits, he's gonna want oh, eight, nine. Yeah, he won't be worth it, but he's gonna no, want it. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the Sashnikov trade? Nope. This week, uh, Toronto traded Sashnikov to St. Louis for a s- fourth round pick, second round pick, fourth round pick, I think. A pick. They're just trying to lower their cap a little bit, probably. Uh, well, they've got. They're trying to get rid of bodies because they have mm-hmm. like fi- they have. They're at the the cap of players on the like fifty. I think they're yeah. at, I think they're at fifty. Right. So they're at forty nine now, but they were at fifty. Mm-hmm. But one of he's injured, but he has a clause in his contract where if he is sent down to the Marlies, he can walk at any time he wants back to the KHL. Oh, really? So they either basically have to play him on the Maple Leafs or let him walk to the KHL. So if he can't play him because Toronto's so deep, there's no room for him on the lineup, even if he wasn't injured. I mean, if you let him walk for nothing, then that's no good. So, I mean, might as well get a pick for him. Mm -hmm. So I understand the trade at St. Louis 1, I think, because I think he slots into St. Louis a little bit better when he's healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway. That's weird. Reminds me a little bit of the Daniel Carr situation. Um, I don't know if you're aware of that in Montreal side, but Daniel Carr needs to play, I think, eight more games this regular season for the Montreal Canadiens. And if he doesn't, if they don't play him at least eight more games, he becomes a UFA at the mm. end of the year. It's a weird... How old is Daniel Carr? I don't, I don't know. You're going to find out here in a second. He's not very old. I, I imagine think he's, he's like 22. 22, I think is about right, yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty it's pretty odd. Like it's a two way deal he's got. He can go down to Laval, but if oh, he's down, oh wow, sorry, go ahead. He's twenty six. Oh, is he? There. So if he goes down to Laval, then if he goes down to Laval for so much time that he doesn't get to play eight games in Montreal, or even mm-hmm. if they have him on the team roster in Montreal and they put him in the press box, he's a healthy scratch. Doesn't count. So he still needs eight games. That's interesting. Yeah, it's weird. I heard that, and I didn't know that until I heard that this morning on Montreal Sports Radio, but. Uh, and he's actually playing well. He's one of oh, the yeah, team. He's, he's one yeah. of the guys that's playing well in Montreal. And for some stupid reason that no one can figure out, they're just not dressing him. And when they do dress him, they don't play him much, and it's just too bad. So Nicholas Delorier is a UFA next year, mm. or this year, I guess. Lock him down. Uh, what do you sign him for? Two, two and a half. He's getting seven hundred and seventy-five thousand right now. Yeah, twenty-six. You give him two. Yeah, if he if he'd stay long, like if he'd stay, I'd do five years at two, two and a half. If he would stay five, and I think that gets the best value. Yeah, I, actually, that's a really I don't really I don't agree with you a lot on things, <laughs> but I think you're right on the money there. Cool, I'm learning. Pun intended. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I have one other thing to discuss. Do you have anything? Nope. All right, I have one thing to discuss here. It so is. While you're calling that up, I'm going to display my New York Islanders coffee mug that, that we kindly got in mail time. Yeah. And I love it. It's got Geico on the other side. Now, being a left-handed person, normally I would put the cup like this. We're not sponsored by but we're not sponsored. We're not sponsored by Geico. <laughs> so I, I've uh, used the cup without the handle. What we're going to do is we're going to do an NHL draft simulator. Oh. So what I'm going to do is bring up the current... Uh, Standings? Uh, draft projections. Okay. And based on where the teams fall, I'm going to tell you who they get. Okay. Um, 
So these are obviously not official. They're no, just just someone's metrics. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it comes from looks like Sportsnet you're looking at there. I now? think this is Sportsnet. So uh Rasmus Dalin is or Dalin, however you want to pronounce it, is first. Uh so this might be NHL Central Scouting too, is it? I don't this was no sorry, this is in December. They've changed recently. Yeah, they have a new report that came out at mid mid season. Yeah. And I don't recall from memory who's I think Darlene's still at the top, but Um I think actually it changed quite okay, so Darlene, uh Svech, Svechnikov. Svechnikov, yeah. And Zadina. Okay. And Kachuk. So oh, we just need the, f- the top three. Okay. So I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna pick a do a one one team at a time here. Let me set the mood. <laughs> okay. So the suspense is building. If we look at the percentages, mm-hmm. Arizona has an eighteen percent chance to win, to get the top pick. Buffalo twelve point five percent. Vancouver. 10.5%. Ottawa, 9.5%. Montreal, 8.5%. And it goes down from there. Mm-hmm. Edmonton, Chicago, Detroit, the Rangers, Florida, Carolina, the Islanders, the Ducks, the Kings, and the Avalanche. Okay. Now, the first time I did this, <laughs> when I wasn't filming, I got Columbus. Columbus? I got Columbus. As the number one draft? As the number one drafter yeah no kidding yeah okay we've just been talking about them as a playoff contender here we go let's do it are you ready i'm ready the number one pick goes to the montreal you know it's funny i did this probably 35 times yeah. or earlier never once got montreal as the number one pick so for those just listening audio only uh, yes. You've just clicked something with your mouse on the screen that does a prediction. <laughs> yeah. And at this time it calls up Montreal. Yeah, on, Montreal. In the lottery, the draft lottery. Montreal has won the, the draft. They the draft, draft lottery. Darlene, first overall. Yeah. So if you do a refresh there, does it oh, do it again? Oh, yeah, but I need to pick the next, I need to pick number two now. Oh, okay, right. Drafting second overall. <laughs> Is? The Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators. <laughs> Drafting third. Ooh. Is Arizona. the Arizona Coyotes. And then it gives you the rest of the standings here along the side. Now I can reset this. We can do it again. Okay. Try another crack. Drafting first overall is the Buffalo the Sabres. The Buffalo Sabres. Exactly what they need. Mm-hmm. Next is the Florida Panthers. Florida and Panthers. next is the, the Rangers. Rangers. Holy crap. Those could go anyway, right? All right, let's do this one more time. One more time. Drafting first overall is the Edmonton the Oilers. Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> How many times have they had the first overall pick mm. in the last 10 years? Three, I think. Mm. Four. At least. Next is the Arizona, Arizona Coyotes. Coyotes and, and the Vancouver Canucks. Vancouver Canucks. So there you have it. The good news about this is that in the old days before the lottery, you could tank and be assured of a first round. And they fixed it. First, yeah. And this is the fix for that. So yeah. when you ran the simulation and got Columbus... That's actually a good thing because it shows teams that are maybe trying to race to the bottom that uh, it's it, it's a fool's game to try to make that gamble. Well, we saw it with New Jersey last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They think they were in fifth, maybe? And they came first. And then Dallas was like 11th and they came third. Yeah. Something like that. So The one thing I don't understand, and the reason I don't understand it is because... I haven't tried to understand it, but when they, <laughs> they stand there, when they do the lottery and they hold up this card, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the team picking whatever. I don't know how that happens, actually. I, I don't know what. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I don't know how, like, I wish it was more like Chase the Ace, you know, they have oh. a whole bunch of things that are face down and then they hold up the one they that's chosen. They can't do that. But they can't do that because of all these weird ass percentages. Yeah. But let's say there's a hundred percent chance of any team in the draft lottery getting the first pick. Like what I would prefer is that if Montreal has an 18% chance at getting in, there's 18 checkers out of a hundred that are in that. They do it. That's what, that's the way they do it with balls. With balls. It's, like, it's like bingo. Okay. I think there's a big vat of balls. I don't, but they hold up these cards, these. Yeah, but they do that. They don't show the balls. They, well, sh- they show the balls after they show the card. Like later on, once all the picks are done, they show the balls. 
you always see the balls at the end. I think that's I think that's how it works. Is it not? Isn't that a general life lesson? <laughs> uh <laughs> Well, I guess that it contributes to my lack of understanding. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I remember seeing balls. If this like, is driven by a bingo ball checking type system, I want to see them. I'm pretty sure you do. I remember seeing, I remember them showing them because they show the process after it's done. There's all kinds of commentators have probably already typed in the answer to this. Well, so we'll, we'll be looking at the comments. But. We'll be, we'll know by the time that oh, yeah. this is over because <laughs> we're going to look it up. We'll look up the balls later. Yeah. See, before, well, hardly ever lately have I cared about the entry draft because my team's never been close to <laughs> even trying to get a first pick. What was the... the but they, a couple of years ago, they did have... 2012? Yeah, they 13? did have, They got uh, Galchenyuk. Third right? overall. Yeah. And that, yeah, was, that, yeah was, that Yakupov, was the highest they drafted for a while. Yeah, Yakupov went first. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Murray went second, and then Galchenyuk went third. And from that draft class, he's by far he the, was, the, yeah. the best pick. He turned so. out to be the number one pick from that year. Mm -hmm. And then not last year, but the year before, I think they drafted Sergachev fifth or sixth mm -hmm. or ninth, or I don't remember. Or And he was so good, they gave him to a better team. Yeah. Yeah, good for them. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, that was facetious. We won't uh, we won't discuss that mm. that trade too much. Um, the last thing I have on the list is the uh, fish bowl. If you'd like to do that. Oh right. There's a question in that fish bowl that I forgot about until the other day. I should have taken it out because it's uh, there wasn't a, uh, there was only so many questions submitted, and uh, I had to put it in there because I wasn't willing to make up a question on my own. All right. So I think that's kind of cheating, but it's a personal question, so. <laughs> If I had remembered it, I would have removed it from this bowl, but <laughs> I'm hoping this isn't it. I can put it in from here. All right. I see it quite well. So. You do that, and we'll roll the intro. Right on. All right, we're back. We have the question on the screen. It is, what type of, hu what type of humor makes you laugh the hardest and why? I forgot this question was in here. For me, <clears throat> I don't even know if you call this a genre of humor, but people getting scared. Yeah, I think I've inherited that gene from, from you. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll spend hours on YouTube watching scare pranks. Yeah, scare pranks. People getting scared. I, and I don't know if you call that a humor, humorous, uh, a yeah, division think, of humor, a yeah. genre, but I can do, like, I don't watch America's Funniest Home Videos. I was just going to mention that anymore, but that's where I first saw any amount of it. The, the dude getting scared at the coffin. Do you remember that clip? Oh, it's from like the nineties. Yeah, and then there's yeah, and is this is that the one where he's up in an attic and a guy yeah, comes he, up at a does the yeah, and his voice goes up about three octaves, <laughs> and his hands go up in the air. He's a great big guy, and he's like, ah. uh, I just love that. And even the Ellen Show. I'm not a big fan of the Ellen oh, Show. Oh yeah, yeah. But but she has that thing in the middle between the two chairs that box that she'll put i think she does it every day i don't know why people even go on the show if they're not don't want to get scared because almost every every day i think someone pops out of that and scares the crap out of the <laughs> guest that's there i love those so that's and i can i can watch that all day people getting scared i love it did you see the clip of the teddy bear scare at the hockey game no he didn't no nope. see if i can find it <laughs> on here <laughs> And while you're looking, I'll answer for your mother. Uh, if she was on the podcast, she loses it when they show these montages of people falling down. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. If it's one of these, they play music in the background, and it's about a bunch of people all drunk at weddings, and they're dancing on the table, and they fall over, or they someone falls into the Christmas tree, and someone falls on the snow. If they just show enough of them packed together, she'll lose it. She's gone. Really? Oh yeah, she's gone. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh man, I don't know where I saw it. Mm. Teddy bear. It prank? might have been on Reddit. Was it a prank? Yeah. Oh, that's I'll never find this now. Reddit search sucks. But I also like the ones where someone will dress up as a tree or something and stand on the sidewalk, and people oh, walk yeah. by, and the and the guy in the tree will go ooh like that, and they. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> they get scared. That that's good stuff. But but the ones that are the best are when people jump out of things, or when they. Um, there was one where that was very elaborate. Someone had just done it at home. They put a hidden camera up in the corner of the house, 
and they had some little, well, it wasn't a little, it was a good-sized doll, but the size of a small child. But they had it with the straight hair and probably blood on it and a white dress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they had some, I think they had it mounted on a remote control car or something. So when the, the guy's wife came home, she opens the door. And the one I remember the most vividly, she knows something's up. She says like, okay, you're trying to scare me. You, you know, she knew because just the way the, the lighting was in the apartment when she got back. And all of a sudden this girl comes sliding out of the living room. And, she, and even though she knows she's about to get scared, she loses it. Yeah. She just loses it. It was really good. Yeah. So are you getting close here? I uh, not really no. Well, this is tantalizing. Yeah. Maybe uh, when you do find it, you can put the link in at the bottom of the. I'll have to <laughs> of the show. I'll probably have to show you later because. Copyright. Like, well, no, not 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 that. I just can't find it. It's uh, it's lost in the depths of the internet. I don't even know where I found it. I think I found it on Reddit, but the Reddit sub the the GIF subreddit changes so much every day that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll find it eventually. But I'll show <laughs> cool. You. All right, that's all. Uh, I think that's all I have. Great. How did our time look today? An hour. There you go. Awesome. Who knows? Filled Who? up with a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Why are people still listening to this? <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Thank you very much for uh, watching on YouTube. If you are, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. If you're listening on iTunes or Google Play Music, we really appreciate that. I know that we have just a lot of audio listeners. Um, our podcast isn't really geared toward just audio because we show some stuff on the screen behind us and uh, we have some visual aids like maple syrup sometimes and stuff but uh, i'm always trying to think of the audio people though after yeah, you are. working radio for years that's and, right you uh, are and i always forget about them so that's not good of me but and actually when i audit this podcast because i always listen to it oh do you really i i don't look at the video I, I listen to the audio part just to see how it sounds i never listen back yeah i never listen or watch it back like i edit it but you're done that's it crazy all right. Thanks, guys, for listening or watching. Appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys are having a good weekend. It is a long weekend here in Canada. Yeah. Well, some, some parts many, of Canada. many of the provinces have created a holiday Monday. It's Islander Day yeah. on Monday. Ooh, so. it's Family Day in New Brunswick. Yeah. No, I don't it's know. not. I think they call it Family Day. No, they don't have Family Day in New Brunswick. They just enacted it. What? I think this is the first one. Wait. We need to talk about this. Okay. <laughs> they have... New Brunswick Day in August, and they have Family Day? Correct. So they have one more holiday than PEI does? Yeah, I guess they would, yes, because PEI does not have the one in August. That's some that's some S word, that is. Well, <laughs> the, uh, the CBC News, or the, sorry, Global News last night in New Brunswick interviewed the uh, Chamber of Commerce representative uh, in Fredericton, uh, whose name is Krista Ross, and she, f speaking from the business community, was against this extra holiday because businesses were going to be losing a whole day of being open and getting revenue, yet they were still going to have to pay their employees. And in the wintertime, they're paying to heat the premises, and, and they're still outlaying money that day for no revenue. And she was just saying, listen, you know, don't forget about the businesses here, that every time they create a new holiday, we lose. So it's an interesting point of view. Yeah, small businesses, local businesses would hurt. Mm -hmm. um, but as a, as a person who likes be off i guess then yeah I, I don't care i like the way. idea of federal holidays like in the united states they have martin luther king right uh, yeah, Junior yeah. day which i think is a couple of weeks ago they had a holiday monday and you know it's federal it's nationwide i like that you know it's everybody's level playing field all that exactly that's great but these individual it's weird it's, it's weird it, because it, it varies but i don't do states do that oh i think so i think some states probably have their own special day that's not wrapped in with all the other holidays i don't know like in canada I think, I think Ontario has family day. Mm -hmm. There's some other provinces that have family day like this. I think Nova Scotia has family day. Yeah. Uh, but some, some provinces. They just, don't have anything. Like Monday's, some, Monday's just a normal day. Yeah. And some other provinces, they have a Monday holiday. It's just not this Monday. It's the one who was last week or next week. It's yeah. not the one coming up. It's strange. But and, and in Quebec, they have St. Jean-Baptiste day, which right. is uh, the last weekend in June. Typically it's on a Monday or, or, or it's the day itself. And it, it's mm -hmm. a day off. It's, it's semi-official, uh, but it could follow, you know, could fall almost any time and, and mm -hmm. be a day off for a lot of Quebecers. And then here in PEI, there's an unwritten holiday. Oh, that's true. The Friday the, of the Gold Cup. The Gold Cup Parade, yeah. The Gold Cup Parade. We have a basically a fair here in Charlottetown area. Uh, it's called Old Home Week, and it runs, <laughs> yeah. I think, the last week of August or the second to last week of August every year. And on the last day of Old Home Week, 
which is when people come back from those who've moved away come back. They have the Gold Cup Parade uh, in the late morning hours in Charlottetown. And banks close. It's it's not... Everything closes. You're not obligated to close. No. But it's like an... You just... It's a thing you do. Yeah. You, you close. You because close. it's small town local. Yeah. You, that's just what you do. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Just for the record, can we discuss the name Old Home Week? Is that not the most ridiculous name for a festival <laughs> like that's the best name you can come up with old home week and it's not even about old homes <laughs> it's about like horse racing and crab there's lots of horse races they have a midway a midway type carnival comes it's they like have uh, they do rides dog and shows and cow showings and that stuff's they cool there's a pet, lots of petting zoo there's lots of people interested in that stuff oh there's, they love there's it there's rides and there's stuff yeah. but it has nothing to do with old homes yeah PEI. <laughs> PEI is a very agricultural place, so there's lots of agricultural co- competitions, like, mm-hmm. you know, the best cow. and uh, It's a great week. The horse racing. It's a fantastic week. Oh, it's, it's super. It's a lot of fun. I just don't like the name. Yeah. It's silly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Thanks, guys, for listening and watching. Appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys are having a good weekend, uh, watching lots of Olympics, watching lots of hockey, and uh, bonus. And p- the Daytona 500. No one's watching that. I might be the only one then, but I can't wait. I can't wait. You I'm are, so excited. You are so excited. The world center of speed. The, the start of the season. Did you see the... Oh, I'm getting sidetracked again. <laughs> you know the guy, who, the zebra corner, the guy who does the fake commercials? Oh, yeah, Mac. Mac. Did Mac you, from Did you Boston. see the one he did about NASCAR? No, I did not. Oh, I should show it on the podcast. <laughs> no, I can't. I don't... I won't do it. Copyright. He's great. He's he is great. amazing. He makes so much great fun of those stupid Chevrolet commercials. Mm. The, and the one especially is, is that, <laughs> well, there's a so many. You just go check it out. It's called yeah. Zebra Corner. Yeah. It, it, it'd be way better if you just watch it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Zebra Corner. <laughs> Don't miss it. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for, for listening or watching. Appreciate it. Hope you guys have a good weekend and I'll catch you in the next podcast. Actually, sorry. Bonus podcast tomorrow. Yeah. So. Check that, check that out if you want to hear some more uh, stupid talk that has nothing to do with hockey. <laughs> See you guys later. Adios.